lost to just the juice. Texas A&M completely gave it up against Auburn. I don't know what happened. How do, you know, Jimbo Fisher is the greatest at completely folding in a game from what I can see. At least we had the plus six and we hit it again at plus four and pushed on that one. And the money line did not go through because of that. I, I was pretty pissed off at Texas A&M. It was, it was a good start until then. Buffalo, of course, I missed the action on Tuesday. That that hit for us. I don't think it was the greatest handicap because I thought that we got a little lucky there. Miami of Ohio fumbling on that last drive to to score to try to bring it within, I believe, seven points. So we were pretty lucky on that one. Then you have Boston College at Virginia Tech. They took care of business. Boston College was in a look-ahead spot to Clemson, but still they took care of business well. A.G. Dillon had 96 yards and a TD. Now a game that I didn't bet, but like I said, the way Wisconsin has been playing, I should have. They were only up to Rutgers by 10 points. Okay, in the first half, 10 stinking points. And I think that Arthur uh, Artur Sitkowski from Rutgers outdid Hornibrook and Jack Cohn combined. Of course, Wisconsin ran the ball to Taylor. He had 208 yards, but only beating Rutgers by 10 points was pretty pathetic on Wisconsin's side. And I don't know, I don't know why they were ranked in the top 10 in the beginning. I was a little bit hesitant myself, you know, whoever decided to overrate Wisconsin can kiss my butt. And that brings up Alabama versus LSU. I got to tell you, Alabama, just like I said before, is literally one step above everybody else in this league, including Clemson, okay? They are in their own category. When you watch them play, they're fast. They knew what they were doing. They knew when Tua, Tunga Viola, knew when to throw the ball when his receivers were breaking into their routes. Oh my goodness. They are just, they're just amazingly good. And LSU tried, you know, they played as tough as they could, but they are just below Alabama. And you can just very much tell, you know, (laughs) you can very much tell the difference in talent here. It's not just talent though. It's just, it's everything. It's coaching. LSU didn't score at home. They lost 29 to zip. You, how do you not score at home? 295 yards and two TDs for Tunga Viola. LSU, Joe Burrow tried. He had 184 yards, and when they got close to the red zone, they just couldn't do it. He had a pick. Damian Harris from Alabama had 107 rushing yards. Najee Harris had 83. Tua had 49. They had 281 total rushing yards to LSU's 12. LSU had 12 total rushing yards. Just like Penn State, they could not move the ball against this top defense. If you're going to pick who's going to be in the championship, it's going to be between three teams. It's going to be obviously Alabama, and it's going to be either Clemson or uh, Clemson or Michigan, I would say. I think that uh, I still think it looks like though look ahead line if Alabama played Clemson is if they are favored by eight and a half points. Let's get into the Big Ten and to the power ratings. So Ohio State, I had a downgrade from twenty five points better than the average team to twenty three. I don't know what's wrong with this team. Urban Meyer's health isn't that good, from what I'm hearing. 
he has some sort of a a cyst or something in his in his uh, brain, I believe. I hope obviously he gets through that. You never, you know, even if you don't like a coach, you never ever would wish bad health on anybody. Michigan is right there with Ohio State in my power rings, and I was tempted to put them ahead, but I didn't. I have them at 23 points, and they absolutely deserve it. And now I just cannot wait for that Michigan-Ohio State game. Next, we have Penn State that I downgraded from 18 to 17. I mean, how much can you downgrade them playing in that atmosphere? But they have their own issues. McSorry's banged up. Their offensive line is not top by any means. They can't stop the big defenses. Not saying that Wisconsin's can can pressure them yet when you see him play next week. But, you know, it's not – Penn State's not the Penn State of the last two years before. Um, talent and Joe Moorhead being gone. I have Iowa next at 14 and a half, and uh, they lost by two to Purdue, but that's what the spread was, so no reason to change that. Michigan State took care of business against Maryland. And, uh, you know, uh, Maryland just can't beat the bigger teams. They can destroy the little ones. They're just that middle team. Well, they beat Texas, but that was so early. Michigan State is a 13.5 right under Iowa, in my opinion. Iowa should beat Penn State, remember. Then I have Wisconsin at 12, down from 13 to 12. And I'm not sure if they're, they're bettable. Purdue is 10 they, I upgraded them from 8 to 10. ESPN has them at 12.4, and Team Rankings has them at 12.6, so they're higher on Purdue than I am. Northwestern is a 7, and that's up a half point. They barely covered, well, it, it was right at the spread, really, in the North, uh, Notre Dame game, but I think I was a little bit too low on them. ESPN has them at a... 7.5 on FPI and team ranking says in my 6.7. Maryland downgraded from 7.5 to 6.5. Nebraska 6.5 up from 5 covering against Ohio State and giving them a hell of a game at Ohio State. They just keep improving. There's Scott Frost. Minnesota taking them from a 5 to a 4 against Illinois. They got destroyed. Illinois had to get that win, though, but geez. Indiana didn't play, so I keep them at a 3.5, but ESPN took them down to a 0.7, and team rankings took them down to a minus 0.3, and I think it's because the Gophers got their butts kicked so bad it affected Indiana (laughs) um, a little bit on those two power ratings. So, uh, you know, it's just Indiana lost to Minnesota, so kind of that chain reaction there. Illinois, I upgraded from a minus 9 to a nine, minus 7. They got something going there. You know, watching them the last couple games, watching them against Wisconsin, watching them beat Minnesota, they, they kind of got something going there. So they deserve a two-point bump. And Rutgers, um, covering against Wisconsin, minus 13.5. They upgrade to minus 12.5, but they still are not a great team. Nothing that you can, nothing that I could personally bet on. Let's move into our betting spots. Letdown spots. West Virginia hosting TCU. West Virginia had that huge game against Texas. Alabama hosting Mississippi State. Yeah, it's a letdown spot, but how can you bet against Alabama? Unless it's a pretty, pretty large spread. Still hasn't been working out too well for people especially in the first half because our Bama play is now it's 9 and 0 in the first half. We started at what week 4, week 5. Duke hosting North Carolina. Duke beat Miami. LSU at Arkansas is a letdown spot because it was just such a huge game that took everything out of them. So, it is kind of a letdown spot for them. They finally got their second loss. Baylor 
beat Oklahoma State, and I forgot to mention that one. It was very impressive. That was a spot play from last week. People were like, who's going to bet on Baylor? They just got destroyed against West Virginia by 40, 50 points, right? Well, Baylor just beat Oklahoma State. That's when the betting spots come into fruition. Michigan at Rutgers. Michigan took care of business against Penn State, got the revenge. They probably shouldn't play their starters. They probably should play a lot of second, third stringers so they don't get injured. I mean, still hard to bet on Rutgers, but God, what's that spread at 39 now? And plus Harbaugh, you know, if he's anything like John Harbaugh, if Jim is anything like him, you know, they might just try to just keep playing the way they're, that they've been. But it's the smart play is to rest your guys and not get Shea Patterson hurt. Get up spots. Kentucky hosting Tennessee. Kentucky needs a big win after that loss. Texas at Texas Tech. I think Texas is, you know, it's a get-up spot after get, losing. But at the same time, it's also possibly a letdown spot. So, not sure about that one. Iowa hosting Northwestern. Iowa lost two games on the road. The one they shouldn't have at Penn State. And that Purdue game. This is where they can get right. Florida at South Carolina. Florida losing to Missouri. You know, if Florida's got a rivalry game coming up and, you know, they, they might just kind of reload here. We'll see. Um, Colorado hosting Washington State. Uh, Colorado has just been looking pretty bad lately, at losing to Oregon State like that. Um, it's kind of a get-up spot for them because, you know, they've been losing a lot of games in a row. But Washington State had their letdown spot last week against Cal, and they prevailed, so. I'm not betting against Washington State in this spot. Look ahead spots. Not a ton of them, but Notre Dame could be looking past a bad Florida State team to Syracuse. I think Syracuse is their toughest competition here on out. Iowa State could be looking past Baylor to Texas. Very possible there. Syracuse could be looking past Louisville to Notre Dame. But Louisville is so hard to bet on. UAB looking past Southern Miss to Texas A&M. Very possible one. And Stanford could be looking past Oregon State to Cal. It's possible. It's kind of like their Battle of the Bay type deal. Bay Area. So that's all you get for your look at spots, really. There's going to be some much bigger ones next week. Let's get into fantasy football with D Nasty. All right, and now we have fantasy football week 10 with our fantasy guy, D Nasty. What is happening, Dave? Not much. What's going on, fantasy fanatics? You know, it was actually a pretty bad week for me. I think I went 0 for 4. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I, you know, I, I made a huge mistake. I picked up Dixon instead of uh, Vanette, and I got this from the mouth of a Seattle, avid Seattle Seahawks fan uh, that I'll never believe again. <laughs> and uh, I got zeros on um, on a couple leagues because I had to fill in tight ends, so I was really pissed about that. Not to mention, uh, in uh, our Dynasty League, I scored the second most points. And you know what happens when you score the second most points in many cases? <laughs> The guy that beats you scores the first most points. So uh, that was some bad luck, actually, and um, on that one as well. The bye weeks killed me as well, and, you know, hard to have an excuse for that. But, you know, you probably win because of some bye weeks too. But uh, still looking really great in my league and the Dynasty League. Your league's not so good, but my other league, I'm pretty good. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can find anybody on the waiver wires for – are people out there, right? Definitely. You know, it's been a few injuries, but I want to quick cover bye weeks. Uh, Broncos, if you got like uh, Philip Lindsay, it's probably the most relevant guy that you have. Maybe Moorhead, but... Uh, Cortland Sutton, and then we could have Emmanuel Sanders for the Broncos. Emmanuel Sanders, that's it. Yeah, Sutton, I, I meant to say Sutton, not Moorhead. So Sutton is the guy that people picked up for Demarius when he got traded. So, yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, the Ravens, and uh, you might have John Brown or Collins or Buck Allen, hopefully not Flacco. 
Um, hopefully you're not stuck starting Crabtree like I had to last week. That guy isn't just not good anymore. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Ravens have a bye this week. The, the Texans, they have a bye. 